Um, and probably, honestly, eventually turn into like a Terminator type of situation where, you know, if they identify someone that's a threat, I don't know, <laughs> fucking robots will come and <laughs> that's when the missiles come. Kind of. <laughs> Have you guys seen, like, the, those, like, crazy robot videos where they're doing, like, flips and, and all types of shit? Boston Dynamics, yeah. Yeah, that shit reminds me, I don't know if anyone's seen Black Mirror, but there's that episode with the robot dogs, and that reminds me exactly oh, of that. Well, I mean, if you listen to, Lex Freeman uh, was on Joe Rogan a lot. He, he works at MIT on AI. He does, like, a... Right now, he's working on uh, cars, like self-driving cars, but he knows a lot of people in the space that code these robots that are scary looking because they're able to do fucking parkour and shit. Um, and that is an oppressive imp- feat, and it just reminds you of, like, iRobot, where fucking they're choosing you over the baby in the car because it's a robot. Uh, uh, that 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 is a fear of theirs, but these people who are creating these things, these things are so infantile like without human interaction they just sit in a room and do nothing um what like they, this is the beginning of a threatening thing they're they're aware of that but when they're on display they look incredible but apparently behind closed doors and creating these things is so difficult that they won't be a threat to humans for quite some time that's good to hear also um, I didn't realize my mic was on mute. If you heard me doing push-ups and breathing heavily, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, go crank out the gates. I can't go to the gym because I'm at the Airbnb and I just got off work, so I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's like really settling to hear from someone who works in the industry. Because when you don't, if you're just looking at these bossing dynamic showcases and you see a fucking thing that can lift 900 pounds, can also do heart parkour, like all that type of shit, you're like, what's what it, give that thing a gun and it's over, you know? Like that's your first thought. But like he said, like unless someone's there with like a remote control or the USB stick to turn it on, or these self-driving cars, like uh, they're, they're all gonna wreck. Like they're not ready. Um, like like unless we're helping, um, they're not gonna take us over anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, I I think technology is rapidly advancing now i mean look look how much has happened in like the last 10 years so you know i, I can definitely see self-driving cars being very active in like 20 to 2030 um time frame and especially with the, the electric electric car movement i mean so these roads could base roads could basically be charging your car as you're driving uh type of yeah did you see yeah. that and, yeah, that and is. the floors are in like a uh, triangle slash hexagons and it, it like it takes the kinetic energy and puts it back into a grid dude that's sick it's it, the, the, and since i listen to lex's podcast a lot and he that's his job is to work on the future of the self-driving cars and stuff he said they they're advancing fast enough to do it it's the government and the legislation side of these countries that the system so slow that they can't pass laws fast enough to enable these programs to start. So like, for example, one of the biggest barriers for self-driving cars apparently right now is like the painted lines on the roads. Like since they're only painted every few years, they're not very uh, clear to cameras and lasers. So until they get the governments to pass a law to paint those over very often so they're very bold and all that type of stuff like self-driving cars aren't even really an option so it's really kind of up apparently to the like the like you said like the the technology evolves so fast and we're so ready on that aspect but unless the people who make the laws about the actual roads how often we paint the lines uh who are what cars get tax breaks for being self-autonomous like the, just in the U.S. specifically, like the legislation is so slow. He said, like they, they keep getting denied, just asking them to paint the roads thicker and more often. And like, so like they are ready on the technical side, or they're getting ready and they're evolving fast. But unless the governments of the world accept these changes, they're kind of stuck. Is my understanding hey, from that? Because like. Uh, and I think it's the same thing with crypto and finance and insurance and everything we've been talking about is like these industries are so old and these players that are so new and are evolving so much faster that like 
the people up top also have to be accepting to the evolution rate and to give these things a chance and to give up some of their power and say, this person might be smarter than me. Let's give their idea a shot and see. Like, it's just a simple bill they have to pass. Let's just paint the roads once a month. Uh, it will cost a little bit more, but then we could take uh, driver driver deaths down by like 30% in a year. Um, and it's just yeah, once they... You just once, hit it on the head right there. Once they realize that, like, it is going to be annoying to put the extra money towards these things or to change the legislation system to be able to at least be compatible with the speed that technology is advancing. That's when we really start to move. But like the U S won't even pass a bill to let them, to let MIT paint practice roads to, uh, try self drive roads cars, let alone even like quote unquote adopt them. Like they're not even able to really practice. Yeah, it sounds. It honestly sounds like to me, self-driving cars would be uh, implemented faster in metropolitan uh, cities because it's more of a grid system uh, versus you know trying to go off-road or um, in more of a rural rural area. So maybe we'll see rollout in cities like New York or Dubai, um, places like that, much quicker. Um, what do you think? Uh, well, yeah, uh, I know specifically, like, I had a girlfriend that went to the University of Pittsburgh, and that city, uh, compared to New York's a lot different, they built it over time, so it's a bunch of one-way roads, like, there's, like, it has the most bridges of any city, because, like, they built it over time, it wasn't planned out. Like, New York, if you take four rights, you're just in a square, like, you, you can get anywhere, even if you're a stranger and you have a map, because it's a grid, it makes sense. So... They're testing, it, 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 like you said, it will work better in certain areas. So, like, if you want a test, a self-driving car, you have to run the test in Pittsburgh because if it if it passed the test in Pittsburgh, it will all easily pass a test in New York because that's a way easier system. So they're, they're, I guess they have to become efficient at the harder task before they are adopted at the easier task. Hundred percent. I mean, we'll we'll see. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty freaky. I think, uh, especially you know, already in city areas, a lot of people don't own a car, right? You just Uber, or whatever, whatever. So it, it makes a lot of sense that you self driving cars would essentially just be driving around, and you can just order one. You know. Yeah, but I think there's also a lot of hesitation. I mean, even though Tesla, you still have to have like your hand there and all that stuff. Every time a Tesla wrecks, it's in the news. Um, like they're, they're, they're hyper sensitive to this thing. Like they, they're waiting for it to fail. They're not really open minded yet, at least on the media side, like they track every, I mean, as they should, you shouldn't just hope that the test is doing its job, but that you don't, you don't see every manual car, uh, wreck in the news. You see every, every car wreck that Tesla autopilot was on. That's a headline story because, um, that's a technology that tried to work and failed and you need to pay attention instead of just saying like these, this is a flawed system. Um, and we're working on it. It's like only pointing out kind of failures and it doesn't really lead to adoption. No, I get it. I mean, they do the same thing about crypto too. You know, all the, any new industry, the media just, you know, they try and rip it apart and, uh, and they, they, they're not, they're not very open-minded people, to be honest. Yeah. And like all the stories and you, you, you see every story about like a Tesla crash on the autopilot mode, but you don't hear any stories about the autopilot mode where it saved people's lives or it did, it, it stopped, uh, it stopped itself from running a red light. Like the driver tried to run a red light and it hit the brakes. Like that, those stories don't make it. It's only, I guess there's just the media in general. They don't. They don't really push the positive. 